Before our Palm Sunday video, some information on how to see the Holy Week and Easter services created by our Walls End and Heaton churches. Please visit our Trinity website, trinitymethodist.church, and follow the link at the bottom of the first page. Our site is again www.trinitymethodist.church. I hope you enjoy our worship. It's Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. My name is Gail and I'm a minister at Trinity Methodist Church in Walls End. And you are welcome to worship with us. We believe in a God who loves each one of us and meets us exactly where we are at that moment in time. So let's still our minds, O oh God, and focus our hearts on you. Open us up that the words we say and hear, the songs we sing and listen to, the prayer we share together might enable us to encounter your spirit again today. Amen. We sing together a, a, a celebratory hymn, Come On and Celebrate. celebrate his gift of love we will celebrate the son of God who loved us and gave us life we'll shout your praise O King you give us joy nothing else can bring we'll give to you our offering and celebration praise Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing, celebrate and sing to the King. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing, celebrate.
on and celebrate His gift of love we both celebrate The Son of God who loved us And gave us life We'll shout your praise, O King You give us joy nothing else can bring We'll give to you our offering and celebration praise. Our opening prayers. Today, we celebrate the triumphal entry of a king into Jerusalem, a king the like of which we have never seen before, a king riding on a donkey, a king put to death in our place and raised up so we may have eternal life, a king who knows each one of us by name and loves us beyond all understanding. Lord Jesus, we come before you in humility to offer our praise and ourselves to your service. May we grow closer to you, know more of you, and learn to follow in your footsteps. Amen. We're going to read Psalm 118 together and the words will appear on the screen if you'd like to say with me. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the home of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, or his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Our next song that we are going to sing is a lovely song. It talks about the grace, the grace of God. So sing with me. Only by grace can we enter. Only by grace can we stand. Not by our human endeavor, but by the blood of the Lamb. Only by grace 
and we enter. Reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed him to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. Hopefully you've had um, a palm cross delivered and um, we are going to use our palm crosses for our next prayer. If you haven't got a, got a palm cross, though, maybe you'd just like to cross your arms in the shape of a cross. Will you pray with me? God of joyful hope, we celebrate your royal promises as we recollect Christ's triumphal palm-strewn entry into Jerusalem. God of strange and amazing truth, we see your majesty in that joyous interlude before the real and awful business of Holy Week. 
This paradox of a cross made from a palm leaf makes us wonder if we know what is happening anymore than the crowds did in Jerusalem or the executioners at Golgotha. God of forgiveness. We confess that sometimes our acts of worship are more about making ourselves feel good than meeting the all-consuming reality of your love. This Holy Week, help us to focus on the good news of salvation in Christ. We ask you to fill our hearts and minds with its meaning. We want to keep faith with Jesus, to walk with him along the painful path of true love. We want to acknowledge our part in the sin that put him on the cross. We want to feel the pulsating joy of your resurrection victory over evil and death. As we hold our palm crosses, we offer you our praise. You paid the price and prepared the way for us through your eternal life. Amen. Our reading, which Susan read for us, is a really familiar one to many people. And yet, this year, I find myself hearing it from a very different lens. Why is this, you might think? Well, like many of you, like all of us, in fact, our lives have changed very much from this time last year. And as such, my relationship with Jesus has also changed. And I expect many of you feel the same. So I wonder what your response would be if I asked you to suggest some modern day heroes. Well, we might say the NHS workers as heroes and anyone who for this last 12 months, and indeed who continues to do so. They've all put themselves at risk to help others. And we might say that today we have heroes and we also have celebrities rather than heroes. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, it seems to me that Jesus is both of those things. He's a celebrity and he's also a hero. He was well known and acclaimed, just like one of today's celebrities. He was recognized as a preacher, a teacher, and a healer. Someone who is worthy of praise. At the time when Jer Jesus entered Jerusalem, there would have been plenty of other preachers, teachers, and healers hoping to gain attention. So, what was it about Jesus that attracted the crowds to him with such fervor? Now, we can make some informed or intuitive guesses, although we cannot know for certain because we were not there. We have the accounts that we read in the Gospels. But what we can ask is how do people today see Jesus? 
Some people may say that he was a good person from history. Some may indeed think of him as something of a celebrity from the past. But what about us? What about you and me? How do we see Jesus today? Or perhaps, since that's quite a big question, you may wait, take some time to reflect on that. Let's focus it down to the events that we heard about today. There's a big crowd going into Jerusalem. I wonder where would we have been on that particular Palm Sunday crowd? Where would we be in the Palm Sunday crowd? Would we have been on the edge and hanging back, watching, wondering, you know, what's, what's going on? Perhaps there'd be people filming it on their phones. Would we have been with those who came to Jerusalem with Jesus, with those, the crowds that acclaimed him by throwing down their coats and palm branches? But, you know, whichever group we would be in today, would we have been with those who turned on him just a few days later? In today's world, particularly in the pandemic, there's never been a greater time not to be shy to tell your story about Jesus, about how much he loves you, about someone who, who life, death and resurrection have real meaning for us now. So I urge you, this Holy Week, as you journey with Jesus each and every day, I urge you to share your story, your story of good news, how Jesus loves you and loves him. Amen. Will you pray with me? On this Palm Sunday, I want us to think of our prayers as a circling prayer. We'll start on the outer edge and work inwards. And there is a response to our prayers. When I say, circle us, O God, will you respond with, with your love? Circle us, O oh God, with your love. Loving God, we pray for our world. The world that you have created with all its people in it. We pray particularly at this time for the country of Myanmar who have been in our news such a lot recently with all the killings that have been going on. We pray, loving God, for peace, peace to reign. Our heart is so sad, especially when we hear about children who have been killed. Bring your peace, loving God, we pray. And we continue to pray for Nazanin Zaghari Rackley in Iran. We're waiting news to hear about her as she was on trial again. Pray that justice will be done. 
and Nazanin will be able to make her way home very soon. Circle us, O oh God, with your love. Our circle moves in a little bit and we begin to pray for our own country. This week we read about changes to asylum seeker rules and especially we hear the messages that you are not welcome. That puts our minds in a turmoil of God as all are welcome to know you and to love you. So we pray once again the justice for asylum seekers for those people who flee their countries because of danger we pray for each of them and pray for our government that they will seek a way forward it is fair for all Our circle comes in a little bit more as we begin to pray for our community and for people whom we know have been affected by COVID. We give thanks for the vaccination program and for the many people that we now know who have had both of their vaccinations. We pray, loving God, that those who are suffering from long COVID would know healing. Circle us, O oh God, with your love. Our circle moves in a bit. We give thanks for our local schools for the hampers that have been going out to the staff. We give thanks for their ability to stay cheerful throughout this pandemic. They're giving everything, for going that extra mile. We pray that as the Easter holidays come up, that they would be enabled to have a real rest. Circle us, O oh Lord, with your love. And our circle moves in to those people whom we know, who haven't been out of their homes for over a year now. To those people whom we know are really lonely. We pray, loving God, that you would show us how we can reach out to those people. Circle us, O oh Lord, with your love. And we pray for those who are known to each one of us, those people who are ill, those people who have been bereaved pray that you would meet their every need each and every day. Bless each one of them, pray. Circle us, O oh God, with your love. And our circle moves in a bit as we pray for ourselves. We pray that you would enable us to tell our story, a story of how much you have loved us, a story of when we have seen you at work in our lives. Enable us by our words and actions to tell our story. Circle us, O oh God with your love. We pray all our prayers in and through the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever Amen Our closing hymn is Make us your prophets Lord who truly hear your word which fires us with your Spirit's inspiration. In all we say and do, prove that your love is true, the hope and source of peace for every nation. Sin makers, your prophets, Lord. for us all. Go now and walk 
with Jesus towards Jerusalem. Listen to his words. Be with him on his journey. Let his story linger in your house and in your life. Let him welcome you. And may God bless you, the Maker, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this day and all your days to come. Amen.